Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be doing part two of our lesson of pocket machining. What we have done in our previous operation, just to remind you, is that we've created a pocket operation in this area from this surface up to this surface, and if I run my Solid Verify simulation, you'll note that the tool is going down in that spot, going directly in, and then machining out that pocket itself. Now, what I'd like to do possibly is instead of going directly in uh, with the end mill directly into the material, another possibility would be if I were to possibly want to drill beforehand. Let's say I'm doing some kind of hard material where I prefer not going in, even using a helicopter, I'd rather drill first. So, what we can do is as follows since we do not know the exact position of the entrance points, like I said, we don't know, but the system does know it. So what we'll do is we'll start a drilling operation. And I'm not showing this to you to, to teach you the drilling operation, but just to show you a specific function within the drill operation. If I choose my drill operation, when I go to geometry, I won't define a geometry. Instead, I'll click on this button over here. Now you'll note, the moment I click on it, there's a geometry that's automatically there specifically for that pocket, as you can see in the name. I'll choose a tool and say I'll just create a simple 10 millimeter drill and I'll do select. I just go to my levels, have my drill depth say go up until that point over there and do a simple save and calculate. Now you'll note that all of a sudden automatically the drill operation that I created is automatically put before the pocket. If I were to exit and try to even take my pocket and put it before the drill, the system will not let me do that. It will say the drill operation cannot be placed after the parent pocket operation. So this is always the order. I can take this and bring it further forward without any problem if I wanted to do that. But I can't put it behind the pocket itself. If I have to do my simulation of my pocket operation right now, and I'll do a simulation using the solid verify option of simulate, you'll see that my drill is being formed at that point over there, as you can see, and then my tool will go directly onto that point. In other words, I know exactly where my point is going in. Now, if I were to go back to my pocket operation and go back into my link area and change it from none to vertical and then choose the area where I want to actually uh, start my point, for instance, I'll use the top view and I'll change it to say over here instead. Now when I do save and calculate and I do my simulation, I'll do both simulations again as well, both the drill and the pocket simulation using my solid verify option. You'll see that my drilling point is now at the new point itself, at the new spot, and then my mill for the pocket my end mill for the pocket will go in exactly into that spot as well. So in other words, the drill point is always attached to that point for the pocket even if I change it and I do not have to go back into my drilling operation to create that drill point again. Now, for my next operation, I'd like to do a finish on the walls of the pocket itself. I'll simply do save and copy to create a new operation. And for my tool, I'll use a different tool, say I'll use this time a 8 millimeter end mill. My levels will be the same. In my technology area, I'll change my wall offset to zero and also my floor offset to zero. And this time, I'll go into rest material chamfer. Now in rest material chamfer, I'll use the option of rest material. And then when I go into data, first of all, I'll change to work around the profile only because on my floor I already finished the floor itself and then I'll put in my previous diameter my previous diameter being my 10 millimeter end mill and then 
what we have here is our feed. So every single time now it goes into these corners, it'll work slower. But we're not finished. If we go into our link area now, you'll notice that our lead in is now active. It was not active before. Now that we have material removed over there over in those in the pocket itself, we can go into our lead in and choose a lead in, do our lead out, and then we're set with this part itself and again if you see in my simulation using the solid verify my tool will go in and work only on the walls themselves this concludes part two of our lesson on pocket machining thank you for joining us on solid professor take care and have a nice day